Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this uh, last video in this uh, series, Diverging Lens series. So uh, previously, we, in a different series, the Converging Lens series, <clears throat> we talked about uh, terminology for thin lenses and sound conventions. And we use that to analyze, obviously, converging lens problems. And then now in the series, we did it for diverging lens. We did two videos, one for an object outside the focal point and one inside. We um, went through the lens equation and the ray tracing techniques. <clears throat> and we did videos on exercises. So in this video, we're going to wrap up the series and we're going to do a, a couple of problems um, using the virtual lab. And... Um, Again, <clears throat> I hope you're finding these very interesting. Please uh, like, subscribe, share, um, and give us your suggestions. And maybe um, also, uh, if you'd like to see some kind of a topic being presented, uh, we would like to uh, at least um, think about it, see if we can do it, and then we'll just do a series on it, okay? So, um, here, let's, let's begin. So this is one of the problems we did. <clears throat> An object 20 centimeters away from its virtual image and two times as large. What is the power of the lens? And now we can see here that the lens was at, uh, uh, I mean, the, the focal point was at 20 and the object was at 10. So let's go ahead and see, or at 40 and 20, I'm sorry. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and see if that's what we get with the um, with this. So here's again the website. Um, you know, again that link will be in the description. So we go down to physics, geometric optics, right here, and let's just click on this. We'll do lenses in the next uh, series. Um, Next uh, few weeks, we're going to release the one on the mirrors, okay? So let's go to lenses right now. And let's choose a uh, diverging lens. And there. And let's get a ruler this time. So we want the distance. I mean, if you look at the, uh, the results that we have here, the image was at 20 and the object was at 40. The separation between them is... 20. So let's put the uh, object first at 40. So here is 40. So that's not going to look good. So let's go ahead and make every unit here a half. So basically, this is this is at 40. So let's go ahead and change this here a little bit. Let's move the object at 40. Okay. So again here, yeah, this is showing from 0 to 80, but every unit is basically half. Let's just think of it as a half a centimeter. So that's roughly 40 centimeters. All right. And let's just bring this over here. Let's make this this tall. Let's keep it here. And make it this tall right there, 40. Okay, so the problem says <clears throat> twice as large. So now, here's the object. So let's see if we can play with the uh, with the focal length. Let's see. Make sure, this is it. It's not. This is not it. So here we go. Let's move it a little bit to the right. There you go. All right. So now, from here to there. Is 40 units again each of these ticks yeah it says from 0 to 80 but that's half a centimeter so that makes it a 40 centimeter okay and then let's see where the image will be when it's half so whenever it's 20 let's move this over here let's see the image is not quite 20 yet let's move it around a little bit. let's increase the focal line and see the image getting bigger and bigger Mm -hmm. So there it is. 
roughly, right? Let me see. So here's the image at 20, which is half of 40. You sure this is a 40? A little bit bigger than a 40. So we go down a little bit. There it is. Yeah, I gotta have good mouse control over here. Uh huh. And the image is now at twenty height, half of it, right? Or the image, the object is twice, two times as large. And they're twenty centimeters away. So let's see. So the object is at forty again. We divide this by two, and we get the actual distance. And look at between them. Between them is also 40 units or 30 centimeters, which basically, since we're taking every unit as a half a centimeter, it's 20 between them. And the focal length landed exactly at 40 as well. Right? Again, unfortunately, if you put it too close, it will not look good. So sometimes you got to play with these units. There's not a way here to basically, and these are the principal rays, by the way, there's not a way to change the units here. So sometimes you may want to take every tick over here as half a centimeter or maybe double it. You know, maybe sometimes it's two centimeters or something. So you can get everything in place. Vertically, we have no issues. Vertically, we can easily put the 40 here for the object. See that? And then for the image is, is roughly 20. Between here, every tick is half a centimeter. So that's 40. Between here and there is 20, and this is exactly what we got. And if we remove these, this is how the, the ray tracing should look like, and here it is right here. Again, the parallel ray, the ray through the focus on the other side, and then the ray through, through the center. Okay. Let's do the next problem. <clears throat> the next problem, we have a, an object produces a virtual image 16 centimeters away from it. If the object is 40 centimeters away from a diverging lens, so let's just keep it like this. Here's the object, and it is already 40 centimeters away. Again, every tick on the horizontal axis is basically half a centimeter. Oops, there it is. So now let's see when we get an object distance so it produces 16 centimeters away from it so now we need we need we need to be 16 centimeters away from it okay so 16 centimeters away okay, the object again right here is uh 40 centimeters so 16 centimeters away we'll put it at 32 centimeters away from the lens so let's see here, what should the focal length be for these to have 16 centimeters away between them? Or the image is 32 centimeters away from the, um, from the object, uh, from the lens. So remember here, again, the way we're taking our ticks, we need the image to be at the 64 centimeter mark. Okay? Or the the sixty fourth tick, or which is will be sixty four centimeters. So let's see. Let's increase the focal length. Again, we have to have them to be. Um, no, this is a twenty four. So sixteen between them. I'm sorry. It'd be sixteen between them. Okay. So this should be at the thirty uh, thirty two centimeter tick. Let's see. Keep increasing. It's not quite at 32 yet. We're getting there. So there it is. So the focal length again is at 60 centimeters, which in our in our units will measure 120, right? The object is at 40, 
and it's 16 away from the image. So between the object and the image, according to our units, should be 32. There it is. And there's 24 between the image and the lens, which is 48. If you go from 32 to 80, that is 48, which is exactly what we got here. So you could use this, again, as verification. And let's see the height of the image. Let's put it right here. Is at 40. Sorry, the object is at 40. And the image is a little bit over 20 right there. <clears throat> let's see here. Yep. So... There it is. Three, that's roughly two thirds, so less than two thirds. So actually 22, 24, right there. Okay, so it all makes sense. Again, the only thing is here, unfortunately, we can only go to uh, here on this focal length, 120 centimeters. And, uh, and then if we look at the, you know, bringing the image in, you cannot bring it in that close, you can only be within 40 centimeters. Okay, so there's some limitations to this tool. Okay, but um, you can, as again, change the units on these to make it fit whatever problem you have. You just have to be consistent. Okay, and uh, just a quick review on the diverging lens is that the image is always virtual. See, I'm moving the object in. The image is always virtual, and it's always to its right. Here's the image. It's always upright, okay? and it's smaller. Doesn't matter where the focal length goes. You can move this like that. Now I have to move it like this. Bring it all the way here. So there it is. Okay. But again, the limitation is you can only bring in the object to within 40 centimeters of the lens. Okay. Now, compare this to a converging lens. A converging lens, let's increase this for a little, a little bit, produces when the object is outside the focal point it produces a real image and it could be smaller, it could be larger than the uh, object. Look here, look how small that is. Here's the image, but it's real. And then as you bring it in, the image gets bigger and bigger, still real. In other words, light rays go through it. And then when we hit the focal point, the image just basically goes to infinity. And that's basically if you have a mag uh, magnifying glass and you move it in and out, you know, away from a piece of paper, uh, you'll see the letters flipped. And then at a certain distance away, you'll see just a whitewash. That's when basically the lens, the paper is at the focal point or at the focal length of that, le of that lens. And then you move it closer. And now you'll start to see a large print that is upright that you can read. It's not inverted. See here, it's inverted. So you'll see things upside down. When you're inside, you can see it large. And that's the purpose of a magnifying glass. Okay. And again, it can only go up to 40 centimeters. <clears throat> and the virtual image is always bigger than the real image. Uh, and it's, so it's left when you're inside the focal uh, point, all right? And this is it for lenses. Um, so in the next video series, we wanna do mirrors, concave and convex, and, and optics and uh, physics. We can also do some math, uh, like uh, conic sections, uh, completing the square, things like that. But for physics, we're going to do CDs and then introduce the eye. 
and glasses basically talk about nearsightedness, farsightedness, what kind of glasses you need to accomplish, you know, good vision basically. Uh, and then here, I mean, in the compound lenses and mirrors, we'll talk about two lenses together, maybe. Converging lenses, diverging lenses, and then both, you know, combination of, uh, of each. And then also a mirror and a lens, okay? We'll talk about conic sections, you know, completing the square, that type of thing. Uh, rotations in XY plane, electric fields and forces, and, um, you know, for charged particles, okay? Uh, and then electric fields of extended objects. Um, all of those, uh, obviously, they're physics. There's some math. And there'll be, again, a lot more physics, math, chemistry, programming, robotics, and engineering videos and series. And by videos, I mean sometimes a video doesn't belong in a series. They'll be released in the, you know, by itself. And then what we have in an involved topic, we'll have lessons and then exercises follow just to illustrate the points in the lessons, okay? Uh, I really hope you're finding these helpful and informative. Uh, again, if you like them, if you think they'll, they'll help you and your friends, please share them and uh, suggest to us um, new topics. Um, and give us your comment and your thoughts on, on this series. Again, thank you and good night.